Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to look at a thorny topic, properly securing your Microsoft account. It's important to get this one right. So let's get it right. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week we're going to look at a pretty complex topic, kind of a, not kind of, literally a security-related topic. Um, I spent a bunch of time over the holidays uh, adding content to the Windows 11 field guide related to some new security technologies like pass keys, and it occurred to me that before we get to anything like that, we actually have to properly secure the underlying account that all of us are using, and for most of us as individuals or consumers, that's the Microsoft account. Although these techniques, these uh, settings and so forth all apply to the Microsoft Worker School account, it's just that you'll do that from a different interface. It's a different, you know, it's a different account type, but it's the, the basics are all the same. Um, so if you're, if you are coming at it from this angle, this should also be helpful um, for you as well. So what does it mean to be properly secured? Um, after really looking through this and, and researching this, I came up with three things um, that a properly configured Microsoft, uh, Microsoft account should be. It should have up-to-date and complete profile and account information. Uh, you should have multiple additional sign-in and verification methods. Um, what that means is that your primary sign-in and verification method is your username and password. Um, and it should be configured to require two-step verification. And uh, we'll get into that uh, in a bit, but it's uh, literally an additional step you have to take each time you authenticate yourself, proving who you are. Um, the idea being that this will throw it hackers from accessing your account if they discover your username and password, right? They need another, there's another step they have to take. They, they can't take it because they don't have that step. Um, so we'll get to that. Um, interestingly, you cannot manage your Microsoft account in Windows. You have to go to the Microsoft account website. So let's start off with doing that. Um, this will work from any browser. I'm using Edge because this is a just a basic install of Windows here. Um, and so the, the Microsoft, this is for my personal account. This is not the book account. Um, this one is more, well, they're all actually completely uh, configured, but this one goes back literally over 20 years. So it's kind of interesting from that perspective. So a couple of areas to look at. The first one is your info. Um, this is your profile and account information, right? And uh, this is there's some basics here, right? It's you know your name, your photo, date of birth, country, region, etc. You actually want to make sure this stuff is complete and correct. I know that sounds like it's nonsensical or you know unnecessary. It's not. Um, you don't. Part of the one of the ways, one of the many ways you can be sure that your account is in good shape is that this stuff is correctly configured for who you are and where you are. Um, if someone breaks into your account, they might want to change some of this stuff. Um, so it's important to keep, let's make sure that's up to date from time to time. Um, if you look down at the account info, there's a couple of different things going on here. Um, but part of it has to do with account recovery. Um, you need uh, other email addresses, one or more that you control that are backups. You need one or more phone numbers that can be used as a backup as well. Um, it's just another way to get into your uh, account. You can also have uh, something called an alias. I don't want to get into that too much. It's not really security related with a caveat. Um, and what that means is, uh, in my case, I have paulatthrott.net is a custom domain, which is something I added to this account years ago when you could still do that. It's grandfathered in. You can't actually do this anymore. The real account name is throt at hotmail.com. And again, this thing is over 20 years old. So I prefer to use a name that's sort of like my name. So I use that alias and that's my default alias. Uh, but I have other aliases I set up for whatever reason. Honestly, these are probably uh, not a great idea. Um, this is just another avenue for people to attack you, honestly. If you're not using this, if if, if you're not using these things, um, don't don't have them configured. There's no real reason to do that. So it's something to look at. In, in my case, honestly, I should probably remove those things. But moving on. Um, the other thing we need to look at is uh, the security page, obviously. So... Uh, this time, yeah, this one is actually, this is throwing up a, um, I'm using a, a password manager, but you'll often get an additional 
authentication request. And this is where that two-factor or two-step verification steps in. So in this case, I'm using Windows Hello, uh, which is built into the computer I'm using as a secure way to re-authenticate myself because there's a pass key uh, built into my computer, uh, which we'll talk about. And I think in the next episode, we're going to get to pass key soon. But um, this is the security dashboard. Uh, for the most part, you don't have to worry about too, too much other than going right into here and making sure that uh, your additional sign-in and verification uh, methods are correctly configured. And there are some number of them, at least two, preferably two, three or four. Uh, and then that you have uh, two-step verification enabled. So we'll go into the advanced security area. And you can see with this account, I have a lot, I have a lot set up actually. So um, I have uh, the, the ability to sign in or verify uh, via my email address. Um, I can get a code sent uh, for a secondary. This is for two uh, for seconds, uh, two step verification, uh, two different email addresses, a phone number. Um, I have different ways where I can get a notification on my phone through an authenticator app. Typically would be the right way to do this. Um, and I can use uh, Windows Hello, like I said, through a passkey. I have a, a YubiKey setup. I've got all this stuff. But why don't we take a look at an account that maybe isn't... Uh, isn't as secure, although it's not horrible. I actually sent a, uh, all right, I actually turned some stuff off before we started this um, just to make it a little bit better. So I'm gonna get, I'm using a Microsoft Authenticator app here just to verify who I am. This is part of that two-step verification. Again, I'm gonna go into advanced security options. And um, you know, here you can see uh, slightly uh, fewer items, I guess would be the way to say it, right? But still pretty good. Um, you. You want to make sure that everything here is something you can control. So if you have email addresses set up like I do here or phone numbers, they need to be yours and you need to control them, right? If this is a work address, that's not necessarily great because at some point someone else could have access. In fact, at any point, someone else could have access to it. So um, you want it to be something that you control and there should be multiple versions of it in case something goes wrong, right? Um and then I've actually set up security keys. We're going to talk about security keys in a, a future episode here as well. Um, but the one thing I, it's interesting. I, I actually, uh, I thought I had disabled this, but I haven't. So I'm going to remove this now. I'm going to remove the Microsoft Authenticator app. Um, and this is a way to do uh, two-factor or two-step verification, right? So you can add methods for signing in and verifying yourself from this interface. And I'm going to choose, use an app. It's going to tell me to get the app, which I already have. It doesn't have to be the Microsoft Authenticator app, but what I've found is that um, Microsoft accounts work best with that Authenticator app. Um, your other online accounts, honestly, will probably work just fine with any Authenticator app, but I just happen to, I, these types of accounts just work best with Microsoft. So uh, it will offer, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm using a... Uh, uh, a plugin that turns the screen dark. So let me turn that off. So it pops up this um, QR code. So you can't really see this too, too well, but I have a, my phone here. I'm going to go to the Microsoft Authenticator app, sign in with biometrics, add an account, personal account in this case, with a QR code. And I'll use the camera on my phone to scan it, and it adds it. And dun, 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 dun. this froze my phone yesterday, so hopefully this will be fine. <laughs> um, do, 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 boop, done. Okay. And it's going to give me the option to use this account for auto filling uh, on the phone. I'm not going to do that for this. That's not related to anything we're doing or it's something that I want, but I can click done. And uh, once you have uh, the right number of things, this would be uh, two email addresses or one email address and a phone and some kind of other device, right? Um, an authenticator app on a phone or a security key, which again, we will talk about in the future. You can go down here and enable two-step verification, which I've already done, of course, right? So, um, and that's the thing that pops up that dialogue. It's not enough to have the username and the uh, password. You also have to be able to verify your identity using an additional step, right? Um, the additional step is in the form of a, your phone pings. You look, there's a notification, you click on it. It makes you securely sign on to the device. And then you can, sometimes it will send a number or will ask for a number and you, you supply that on either end. It changes uh, over time and that's part of the point. Um, and then it, once you've securely signed in like that, you get into the account 
on this device. So it's kind of an interesting thing you can do here to prove that this is working um, because honestly, for the most part, this stuff just kind of passed, passes through, right? And uh, this is something we'll do again when we look at pass keys and um, security keys, but you can open an in private browser if you're using Edge or an incognito browser. Go to one of these Microsoft accounts, uh, Microsoft websites that uses a Microsoft account and sign in. Now, normally this would pass right through, right? So if I was in this window, for example, if I go to outlook.com, um, it should just go right into that account, right? Nothing, nothing to worry about. It just goes right in. But because I'm using this incognito browser, it's actually like, hey, what's going on here? So it's asking for uh, me to do this all manually. So it's kind of a nice way just to kind of force the issue here. So I will poorly type this address. And again, this is, there's the thing. So it's sending me a number. I get this, uh, you can't, so you can probably see it. You got a little authenticator thing. So not only do I have to use biometrics to prove who I am, but I also have to match the number. So I tap the same number, tap approve, fingerprint, and then it approves the request. So it's this additional step. Now, um, this here is only hap well, this, this would happen anyway. It's this in a incognito window. It doesn't matter what I click here. This is just about staying logged in. I, it doesn't matter because once I close this window, that session dies anyway, but now I'm in. So from the perspective of usability, it's an additional step, right? You have to, you don't normally have to type the email address like I did. That's just because of incognito. But if you should have to authenticate for whatever reason, um, this will let you do that with one more step. It's a tiny inconvenience. It's using a device I have with me at all, all the time, a phone and, um, way more secure right? This is what, this is the thing that, well, one of the things, but one of the most important things that can prevent uh, hackers or others, malicious parties from getting into your account. Now, there's a couple of things you can do after the fact, or you can do this at any time just to kind of prove that everything is kind of configured the way it should be. Um, one is if you go into this privacy area, there's a, it's like a safety review. Honestly, only the first two are related to safety or security, I guess, uh, but they're important to look at. So these are your recovery methods, right? Email address and phone number in the case of this account. Fo email address and phone number that I control, good. If they weren't, I could fix that here. And then you click next and it says you're doing a secure sign-in, right? It's a passwordless sign-in. You never have to type in your password. It's two-step. You have that additional device that you're authenticating against. So you're good. Um, the rest of this wizard is actually, it's not nonsense, but safe web browsing on edge, whatever. Um, some information about uh, security settings in Windows and in your account. And then Microsoft 365 privacy settings, honestly, is somewhat interesting, but um, not related to the topic <laughs> at hand, but uh, something you should look at. Um, so this is all good, really. We don't have to worry about the Microsoft Edge bit. Um, so that's, that's, that's kind of the, the proactive bit. Um, every once in a while, and you need to figure out a schedule for yourself, maybe every six months or a year at most, um, make sure all your information is correct. Um, and and the, <laughs> this is a little scary, but one thing to look at is your sign-in activity, right? So I've been doing this against this account a little bit. Um, so these are all successful. Um, let me see if I can bring this up on my primary account because there's uh, often some humorous uh, <laughs> data here. Um, it turns out, that uh, people from uh, China, Russia, Vietnam, Germany, the UK, and elsewhere have been trying to break into my account for pretty much my entire adult life, apparently. And um, you can see that in some of these uh, unsuccessful things. So that, that one was me. That one is me. So I've been scrolling around with my account, so a lot of these are going to be me. But if I go back far enough, I will find, I was really hoping to find one here. I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, these sign-ins from other countries. And... Um, Oh boy, I was hoping that I would have something, but I, unfortunately, I've been using this so much. I've been I've been failing on purpose to see you know what happens here. Um, the good news is this: so Microsoft actually this you can see this. There's some locations out here: uh, Germany, Venezuela, Russia, Turkey. That's a new one. Um, yeah, so South Africa, cool. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, that's a little scary, but it's also okay um, because I, first of all, I'm not getting spammed with two-step notification requests, right? If Microsoft wasn't handling this in an elegant way, 
it would always, every time someone tried to do this, automated or not, however this is happening, I would get a pop-up on my phone and that would get really annoying, right? But Microsoft knows where I am because we have location data um, and it knows that I'm signing in and authenticating and passing through authentication on my computers in this area near my, in and around my house and that's normal behavior. So if someone near here tries to sign up with my account, that will trigger a ping on my phone. But if it's someone in Venezuela or Germany or Turkey, it will not. Um, and that's good because there is no way in here to do, it says secure your account, but that, that just punch you out to the, um, to the Microsoft, you know, the security section of the Microsoft website. There's no way to go in here and say, Hey, someone's trying to attack my account. They know they already know you're, you're all set. Um, when you get that authentication request and it isn't you, that's when you can report it. And that's when you should report it. Right. Because that's, that means someone has somehow, uh, you know, bypass the system, which are, is at least maybe physically close to you. Right. So this is scary in a way, but honestly, what it really shows you is that the system's working. So it's not actually bad. So, uh, long story short, uh, you want to make sure that your Microsoft account profile account information is complete and, uh, and up to date. Um, you want to make sure your recovery information, especially right. Typically two email addresses or an email and a phone are also complete up to date. Um, you want to have multiple additional sign-in and verification methods, right? These are the authenticator apps, uh, pass keys and security keys, which we will talk about later. Um, accounts that are email accounts that you control that it can send codes to if it has to. That's another way. Um, you could do text messaging. That's not secure. So probably don't do that, but um, people like to use their phones. So that's one option. Um, and then you want to enable two-step authentication. That's the key. It's It's a minor inconvenience for a lot more security. And that's ultimately what it means to have a properly secured Microsoft account. Okay, I hope that you found this, uh, if not entertaining, that ho interesting and hopefully useful. Um, and I hope everybody makes an attempt at least to uh, secure not just your Microsoft account, right, but any other online accounts you have, especially the ones that are tied to uh, your credit cards, your personal data, you know, your Amazon, Apple, Google accounts. Um, you should go through this process on all of them. And they all support... Uh, different versions of all these uh, features, right? Um, we uh, will be back each Thursday with a new episode of the show. Uh, you can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you all for watching. Thank you especially to Club Twit members for keeping the lights on. Really appreciate it. And we will see you next week.